The Our Performer is an online career management platform. So our members uh, can use a number of different features of the platform to get career support fundamentally. Welcome to Jane Jackson Careers, a podcast that takes your career to the next level. Here's your host, Jane Jackson, author of Amazon Careers bestseller, Navigating Career Crossroads. Welcome back to my careers podcast, where I interview fascinating professionals who are leaders in their field or who have made amazing career changes. Now, today I have on the show Brad Eisenhuth, who is the co-founder of The Outperformer. Brad and Adam Ninehouse are entrepreneurs who developed The Outperformer. It's a rapidly growing career management platform to help ambitious accounting and finance professionals to outperform by supporting them with education through experienced industry leaders, career growth systems, and access to a range of mentors from many of Australia's leading organizations. Now, they both developed a passion and energy for building this business through over a decade in recruitment and executive search, and most recently as directors of CFO and accounting recruitment practices in Australia and in Hong Kong. Both of them are high achievers in their own right. Brad is also the author of CF Grow, staying in the driver's seat on the path to CFO. This was published in 2015 and has been featured in the Australian Finance Review, Acuity Magazine, Shortlist and other publications. He's also been a speaker at a number of events, including ACCA's Think Ahead series on career management. And Adam was an award-winning consultant selected by his clients in Asia Money Poll. It's their passion for working with their community to build successful careers and a deep understanding of people that has underpinned their own successful careers and the development of the outperformer. So let's welcome Brad onto the show. Thanks for having me, Jane. Actually, it's the second time to have you back, so I'm very excited. Now that you've made this massive, exciting career pivot uh, with this incredible business, The Outperformer, I'd like to find out all about it. Before we do, to kick us off, can you tell us a little bit about your early days, because this is all about career transition after all. Mm -hmm. So when you were a little boy or as a young teenager, what were your initial career aspirations? When I was a little boy, I... All I wanted to do, well, I went through lots of little phases, but I wanted to be a rugby league player for a long time. And all through high school, I, I probably wasn't the best player, but I, uh, I slowly emerged through the ranks and I ended up getting a contract with a, an NRL club. And uh, unfortunately, I mentioned this in the last podcast we did, it was short-lived, but it was a really, really good experience for me. And uh, I then... Um, realized that um, as much as I wanted to be a rugby league player, I probably wasn't going to be someone that could, um, you know, do that on a long-term basis. One, I had a, a couple of injuries that slowed me down and um, and I learned a lot about myself through that experience as well, but um, moved into a different career path beyond that. So as a little boy, I certainly, <laughs> my, uh, my life has changed a lot since then. So after your initial sporting aspirations, what, what, what happened? What path did you actually take? Well, I was quite lucky in that around the rugby league club, everyone saw me as the uh, the smart guy because I did all right at school and I was at university and I actually had a scholarship to, uh, to study electrical engineering at UNSW. And uh, on that scholarship, I was um, working with Energy Australia um, as part of the program. And I also realised that that probably was, wasn't what I wanted to do. It was a really good experience to go through and test drive that and uh, to do that under a scholarship and making a little bit of money at the time, particularly when you're 18 years old and trying to juggle a football career, um, was a really, uh, really good uh, learning curve. At the same time, extremely busy. So because of that, um, I decided to pull back and look at just trying to make a little bit of money and learn a bit more about myself and uh, myself. And one of the members of my team introduced me to his uncle, who was part of a, a job placement agency. And he got me involved in the organization to do job search training. 
at, at the age of 19, I didn't have a lot of experience to share with uh, people in terms of finding a job. In fact, that was the, uh, <laughs> the first, second job I'd found in my career beyond Pizza Hut. But... <laughs> Um, you know, the, the thing I was quite good at at the time was understanding the framework and the way people think and feel through that experience and, um, and learnt a way of educating in a training environment on, uh, on finding jobs. And so I started to get very interested in um, the whole concept of working with people through um, that process. Um, unfortunately, with some of the people I worked with, they weren't particularly ambitious or career-focused, and that led me into uh, making a decision to wanting to be around people that wanted to achieve their goals, not just find a job, but wanted to achieve something in their career. Their career was more important. So I found myself looking at the recruitment industry as uh, that solution. Um, And I then joined a very large multinational recruitment company, um, which is, uh, which was you know, in hindsight, a, a really good learning curve as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, interesting that you've gone from electrical engineering into recruitment because that's a big jump. But with recruitment and obviously your, your, your deep desire to understand people and, and what makes them tick and what's important to them in order to place them into the right roles, it, it's just when you're talking, I can see, you know, your eyes light up. You really enjoy that getting to know the individuals and getting to know professionals. And then... What I found really interesting is that you said that you wanted to be with other highly driven individuals as well and be surrounded by people who really were on like the same mission as mm. you, would you say? Absolutely. Um, in recruitment, it's quite a strong sales focus. Mm-hmm. Did you find that you naturally were a good salesperson? I think so. Yeah? I think so. I, I worked out um, the fastest path to be a good salesperson mm-hmm. um, but still maintained my authenticity. Mm -hmm. So uh, within a large uh, recruitment firm, uh, it is important to learn to work with the systems and the structures around you and thinking about the best way to not only sell to your clients and work and create relationships there, but it's also important to have very strong internal relationships, which is where I learned a lot about career management. Um, And in terms of selling, you know, I try to, to turn it around into the, the term influence or relationship building. So I created fantastic relationships across that organisation, which led to my success in that company. I, I was one of the high performers uh, each year uh, for the group, and it really came back to the ability to understand what the other person was thinking, mm-hmm. you know, really trying to help them achieve their goal, and through them achieving, I was able to therefore execute my goals by supporting them. And so I, I guess the concept of selling um, came reasonably naturally to me, um, partially because I'm driven and I'm outcome-focused and, and I, I'm, I'm an achiever at heart. I try to win everything, um, but at the same time, because I'm also in tune with the other party, um, the more, I think as a salesperson, the more you understand your audience, the easier it is to create a solution and essentially sell an outcome. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's so much to do with relationship building, isn't it? Now, with, with many recruiters, um, some specialise in niche in certain areas, other are generalist recruiters. What area of recruitment did you go into? From the day I started in recruitment, I worked in the accounting and finance space, and I I learned a lot about uh, that field, which is why I work with that field to, the, to this day in the outperformer. But I started um, working with more junior roles in the more transactional accounting space and, and started to learn at a ground level um, the basics of debits and credits and you know accounts receivable and accounts payable and payroll roles and, and learned through um, doing those roles, which probably had um, a lower focus on leadership but a higher focus on accuracy, deliverable, I mean deliverables and uh, and quality, mm-hmm. and so uh, the mindset and the type of hiring there was very different to where where I ended up working later in my career, which was all about um, you know execution of um, change, um, leadership, management, um, and of course you know different technical skills that are required in a large corporate. So I went through a journey um, where you know fairly early on, probably at about the age of twenty three, I started working in in uh, senior and executive executive roles and hiring heads of finance and so on. So I was quite lucky that I I potentially was able to bat above my average in an early stage of my career. Mm-hmm. Sounds like you, you got a really solid understanding of finance professionals from the ground level all the way up to a CFO level. 
That's right. As well. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that was what about ten years? Ten years of recruitment experience? Uh, yeah, I think we ended up being around eleven a bit. But um, yeah, so just over over ten years. But yeah. um, for me, the majority of it was working with the the CFO as the uh, the stakeholder that mm-hmm. I would be serving, mm-hmm. or their their sort of direct managers, depending on the size of the company, and. Um, I tended to enjoy working on highly critical roles and roles where the 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 selection was really important. The more important it was, the more I enjoyed it um, because to me it was making an impact on the company. And I also found from an from an organisation perspective and from a, a, a recruitment process point of view, everyone's more invested in it. They want a great outcome. They want to see the result. Now that might for some recruiters be really challenging because you know all of a sudden. There's higher expectations on the process. The CFO or whoever that executive is that is making the decision starts to become more particular about their decision making. But to me, I found that a lot easier because the more particular, the more I'm able to refine the search and select the right person. So um, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, it sounds like you understand both sides, you know, really from CFO, what they need, and their aspirations as well, um, all the way down to maybe a junior accountant or assistant accountant who's getting into the business. So understanding a candidate as well as the client when it comes to finances is something that really is your strength. Yeah, I, I don't think I think if you don't understand and try and show a lot of interest and and really understand as much detail as possible uh, about your client, about their organisation, about their culture, about the challenges that they face, if you don't have that, it's very hard to to identify how a candidate is going to be successful in that environment. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, the mo- from my view, the in leading indicator to success in a role, particularly in the first twelve to eighteen months, is the ability for an individual to adapt and take on those challenges and successfully deliver a result around those challenges so you have to understand that and therefore you have to understand your client and you don't just need to understand the function but you need to understand what keeps that particular clients up at night what their pain points are what they're worried about what they're worried about in terms of their team how they're worried how what they're trying to achieve in their own career once you start to understand that entire uh, i guess 360 degree uh, perspective of that individual you can make a much better decision about selection um, now of course i don't do that anymore but at the same time by having that appreciation i still have the ability to work really well with um the various finance leaders and of course the the um the chain of uh, teams that that work for finance leadership Mm -hmm. now with your in-depth knowledge of this area and you writing this book cf grow and what was it cf grow staying in the driver's seat on the path to cfo that's such a great title what prompted you to write that book Brad? it's a long title but yes look the book came out as a result of um well, two components one was the importance of trying to address many of the common issues that accounting professionals were facing in terms of career development and it's you know the title says path to cfo but that's because a lot of them think they want to be a cfo at some stage um but ultimately it's really about career management uh the book um so it was really about trying to help people through the things that they can control and do within their career that um, allow them to achieve their goals and so when they would come to me rather than um you know being um, unaware or, or um, finding it difficult to navigate through challenges, they had some tools and ideas to uh, to digest and utilise that not only apply to that point in time but can be applied on an ongoing basis. Um, the other reason I wrote it, to be quite frank, is that it's important for me to, to show um, the world that I have knowledge that is valuable. Um, and, in fact, a lot of the... Um, the ability for me to influence came on the back of that book. Um, you know, showing someone that I'm prepared to invest in my field, that I care about my field, that I'm actually going to write a 220 page book um, to illustrate that I understand my, my, my subject is important. And particularly as a young person, you know, at the time, I think I was 29, you know, 30 years old, um, you know, that's, an important way of differentiating yourself. There are many people out there with the, the ability to recruit, with the ability to career advise and coach. Um, but ultimately, how do you differentiate yourself? And for me, that's one one form of differentiation. So I took my own advice and decided to differentiate myself. Yeah, and I think 
actually going through the process of writing a book shows that you've got determination, dedication, staying power, uh, because I know how difficult it is to, to write a book because it requires, honestly, just so much hard work as well. And you've got to have that desire to get it out there. And so now it's published and it's an excellent book, by the way, having read it. You. Um, you've now done a pivot again in your career and you've gone into entrepreneurship. So tell me the story. I think for me, I shouldn't say I think I know, that um, there was a stage where I was trying to find more out of my life. And recruitment was great from the personal connection point of view. But, you know, no matter how much money I was making, it wasn't motivating me. It wasn't driving me. And, and I tried to, and I did develop a number of initiatives with the organisation I was with. And they were very successful and they've since gone on to, to, um, to be quite fruitful for that company. But I, I really had a sense that I wanted to make a dent on the world. I wanted to make a difference. And I actually wanted to solve a problem. Um, now, entrepreneurship as well, the other great thing for me, that was a new challenge. It was a new, it was something that would stimulate my mind. It was going to make me and force me to learn new things. Um, it was going to push me into a place that I didn't expect. Um, and I wanted that. I wanted that at the time. Um, of course, there was a, a little bit of push and pull. So, you know, I, I think part of it is moving away from recruitment um, was quite important to me as, as developing as a professional and, and moving away from things that I potentially wasn't enjoying. Um, and then part of it was about um, this this finding myself and, and exploring something that I, I could own. And... Um, it was a really good experience. Yeah. It has been a really good experience. Yeah, it's really satisfying running your own business, isn't it? And so you came up with this brilliant idea for this business, the outperformer, which actually is, is, is it's amazing. Tell us how the outperformer works. Okay, so the outperformer is an online career management platform. So our members uh, can use a number of different features of the platform to get career support fundamentally. So our first part is educate, and we run uh, live webinars where the members can participate uh, in the webinar with a an experienced CFO, finance executive, or executive that can provide advice that's relative and relevant um, to their career development. So we do those 22 times a year and they're all live. And we also create a lot more content around that to ensure that there's um, full provoking and stimulating uh, ideas that the, the community can digest and use to help uh, stimulate their own development. The second piece is that we have a, a community environment where people are able to commu uh, communicate with each other and identify and find mentors. Many of our members are prepared to act as a mentor or provide advice to others simply because it's a great to give back. They don't expect money. They don't want to be paid for it. They just want to be building their own network, which is, which is about them, and they also want to give advice and support, which is also about them. Uh, and I think for many of our members, they want to get that as well. They're, they're yearning for it. They're looking for connections, um, and that's a really big component to career success. So we have that platform, and we've helped a number of people uh, connect with different mentors that have been um, very, very impactful in their, their career. And then the final piece we have is what we call success, which is an evolving area of our platform and we create various um, tools, uh, diagnostics and educational material that helps people um, through different decision making. So everything from what we call a career health check so you can self-diagnose how well you're managing your career and what you know through that assessment you can work out some things you can focus on to um, perhaps drive your your career in a better direction and then you know all the way down to interview checklists now for an interview checklist i'm a big believer that you you don't simply focus on um, turning up wearing a suit and all of the the basic um, requirements that our community are pretty good at that already they're they're very um focused and driven individuals. They don't pay for this sort of stuff if they're not. Um, but what we focus on are, or is understanding the strategy, the issues in the organisation, the connections around you that can support you with understanding that organisation so you can prepare information and create a relationship during that interview that makes you shine um, but also allows you to make a good decision um, so what a lot of people really struggle with when it comes to decision making is that they spend half of their time selling themselves um, to a company but never walk out really clear on whether that organization is right for them and whether it's actually going to be great for their career and the trajectory they want to take so 
the interview checklist also ensures that they challenge and think about the things that will allow them to achieve their goals. So um, that is very important, whether it's working in moves outside of your organization or within your organization. So we have a number of companies that we support. And in fact, I think we're up to 20 now, 20 corporates that we've signed up since we launched in August that actually have put their entire team on this platform and they use those tools to uh, to help with their own development. Mm-hmm. That's such a comprehensive service that the Outperformer provides. And I, I like this where you've got the live webinars, um, which means that people can actually watch them from the comfort of their own office as well. Mm-hmm. And the, the webinars, are, are they about an hour long? Roughly an hour, yeah. yeah. They, they range between 45 minutes and an hour, um, and they're recorded. So if you do miss them, people can go and sit there and digest them. And they also act as CPD points for, for most of our members. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, as a CPA, you can listen to and digest because it is educational, it is career development focused. Mm-hmm. Uh, or as a CA, you know, you participate in these these conversations and they count towards your CPD hours. So it's quite powerful for our members in that respect as yeah. well. I, th- I think that continual um, development is so important. And so you get that regularly, 22 a year, you say? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. The reason we did 22 a year, and it's really important for us to to point this out i think if anyone's considering an education kind of play or anything like this when it comes to careers and and learning and development within an organization our the feedback and research we've done is that organizations tend to do big bangs so they 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 sit there and they say we'll have an off-site and we'll talk about careers and we'll bring in a speaker and we'll, we'll do all these fantastic things and everyone will get excited and apply all of that knowledge and in fact what happens is We get aware of an issue through that and then we go back to our normal life. And the point of using 22 and or or, or consistent uh, information and creating that consistent awareness is that your career becomes front of mind then. Um, And while some of our members can't participate in all 22, by addressing and thinking about your career consistently throughout a year, you start to build momentum towards creating a plan and creating systems around you that drive your success rather than a reactionary uh, solution which might be turning up to a one-day event and uh, and walking away with not much. So that's why we do 22. Yeah, I think the pro- you're absolutely right. The problem with so many workshops is that people get hyped up and then they go back to their desk and then life takes over and work takes over and then they tend to forget everything that they've learned. But having this ongoing is great. And also having leaders in finance mm-hmm. um, participate in these webinars and provide their advice and guidance would be really inspiring for all of your members. Absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest um, pieces of feedback we get is that the members that listen in and, uh, you know, are listening to people that have actually done and been through real examples. We're not talking about just best practice. Um, there are uh, there's a lot of content out there on what great financial planning and analysis looks like. There's a lot of content out there on leadership, but not a lot of people talk about and really open up about, you know what, I actually went through some challenges or, you know, I had to think about these things. And it's more than just a transactional process. There's an emotion here. There's people involved. There's all of these other things happening around me that I have to take into account. And so when our members listen to it, it's actually quite thought provoking and it's real. Um, so you get an entertainment factor in that it's, you know, a real person that you're probably never going to touch in some cases, never going to get the chance to meet. And then there's also that learning component that comes out in that there's practical things that people can can actually apply from watching and learning uh, another executive who's been through the problems before. Yeah. I'm really interested in the community that you're developing through the Outperformer as well. And you say that there are a number of mentors. How many mentors do you have uh, that you can provide through Outperformer and um, at what level are they at? Well, the, mentor, the, the mentors range dramatically. So basically the mentors have spun out of the community and people have acknowledged or, or simply turned on the I'm available for a mentor, uh, to be a mentor button uh, on our system. And so they range from CFO all the way down to manager level typically. Um, even some are, are accountants that um, are prepared to help other people 
fundamentally that's what the basis of it is. And um, so at the moment we've we've got well over a hundred that are prepared to do that in, in within our community, and that's you know it's it's an amazing um, you know from our point of view we feel like it's an amazing achievement to get those people on board and involved. Um, so the the perspective on it to consider from the user's point of view or from the member's point of view is that depending on the stage of my career, there's probably a different mentor that's right for me. You know, if you're a, an accountant with 12 months of experience, yes, it'd be fantastic to meet the CFO of a large ASX listed company, but what are you practically going to learn? You might be inspired, but really when it comes to your career, there are some practical development um, and advice that can come from someone that's a little bit closer to where you are. Um, as someone that can help you navigate through those issues because they've been through them more recently. So our perspective is when it comes to mentorship is to not only find someone that's willing to spar and challenge you and think through these problems, but also someone that's relevant. So if you think about um, you know, an individual's career, let's say, for example, they're a financial controller, but they want to develop skills in the, in the arena of strategy. So wouldn't it be smart to go and find a mentor who's actually working in the strategy function mm. you know who's heading up that area who considers this type the nature of skills who thinks about how someone would pivot and build the skills um to be effective in strategy who could actually you know encourage that financial controller to to develop some extra skills um so that's 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 why we developed um the model where anyone who wants to um share and support can do that obviously there's a there's a slight risk in terms of chemistry um but you know the, the point is you can go and explore and meet many people rather than just simply focusing on one mentor does our performer recommend how uh, someone should enter into a mentoring relationship do you have a guideline as to how many meetings how long each meeting should be how the meetings are conducted absolutely so we've got a mentor mentee guide that we you can download on our website and that's free and in, in, in fact anyone that wants to go into a mentoring relationship, it's, it's quite agnostic. It could apply to anyone outside of accounting and finance. But that's um, what we encourage is building a genuine relationship that works for what the outcomes that you want. So, so for some people, the mentor is really an advice line. It's I'm going through problem X. You've been through that before. You've worked in that space. Can you give me some advice? What have you experienced you know, and it's about asking questions that are relevant. Now, that, that experience might be just enough for someone to go and make a great decision and build some perspective. For others, it's about an ongoing relationship. It's about having someone that can really partner with them and co-pilot their career direction that's in the field as well. Um, so those relationships you know, require some drive from both parties. They require the, the mentee to know what they want out of that relationship to um, pre be prepared to come to those conversations with specific issues um, to actually follow up and say, look, I've done this, can I get some more advice? And particularly if you value that relationship, that's what you're going to do. And that's how the relationship evolves. It's not just about one you know, transaction or a few emails. It's, if you genuinely want some value out of that relationship, you'll continue to, to nurture it. Um, from the mentor's point of view, it's about bringing your best self to the table. It's about being prepared to listen. It's about being conscious of that person's perspective and asking the right questions. And we provide on that guideline some, some ideas and things to consider about whether you're the right sort of mentor. Yeah, I think the most valuable part of, of the outperformer is not only the webinars where you get to meet some amazing leaders in their field, but also having the, the mentors. Because many of my clients say, you know, how do I find a mentor? And so this is the perfect platform, plus all of the career tools. And so, Brad, the, the outperformer, obviously, this is a site that all finance professionals must go to. Where can they find you? They must go there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, www.theoutperformer.co. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go onto that website and have a look at around and you'll be able to see, um, you can search even without being a member, the, the mentors that we have there. Some are uh, fully transparent in terms of who they are and others are there under an alias, but you can certainly um, look at those um, without uh, becoming a member. And if you do want to become a member, it's $348 a year. So it's quite cheap. It's very cost effective. We charge it at the, at 
at the moment our current pricing model is that we charge twenty nine dollars a month. Um, so it's a dollar a day. You know, mm-hmm. people spend more money on their own coffee. Yeah. Um, but th- for three hundred and forty eight dollars, it's just enough to encourage people to take it seriously, to use the tool, to use the content, to engage. And we find that the people that are doing that are getting a lot of value out of it. Mm-hmm. That's excellent value and a wonderful, wonderful career tool for finance professionals. So I'll have all of your details on my show notes on janejacksoncoach.com. And thank you, Brad, for coming onto the show and telling us all about the outperformer and your career journey. Thank you very much, Jen. I really appreciate it. And we enjoyed it. So hopefully I get to come back again soon. Let's let's do this in another six months. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. You can get a free audiobook download and free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. There are over 180,000 book titles to choose, so give it a go and get your free audiobook today from audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. You've been listening to Jane Jackson Careers. Sign up to receive regular career advice at janejacksoncoach.com.